Pinhole photography doesn't have to be limited to film cameras. Let's talk about how to make a pinhole lens for your digital camera out of a body cap. Pinhole photography has been around since the beginning of photography. It was the beginning of photography. The idea of projecting an image through a pinhole is, is how photography got started. So, <clears throat> you don't have to shoot film cameras and deal with the processing and the printing or scanning and all that in order to enjoy pinhole photography. You can easily take a body cap, like this one, and convert it into a pinhole lens. Now this is, is not a complicated process. I'm going to show you how to make a, a simple pinhole lens and uh, talk about how to use that. <clears throat> and then today we're going to go to the Watonga Cheese Festival here in Oklahoma and uh, we'll use the pinhole lens to take some pictures there too. So before we get started, if you would, please click the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. Hey, so the process of making a, a pinhole lens out of a body cap is really quite simple. We're going to drill a hole in a body cap, a plastic body cap, you know, kind of right in the middle. Um, we're going to take this pinhole that I have. Now this is one that I purchased from Reality So Subtle in France. They're laser drilled precision pinholes. But we're going to tape that on the inside and so drill a hole, tape it on the inside. It's going to take just a couple minutes. Really simple to do. The, the trickier part is probably making the pinhole. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can buy them like I said. I'll put a link in the description down below to Reality So Subtle's website. You can buy these on their website. They're precision laser drilled um, and I believe they come in 0.15 millimeter, 0.2 millimeter, 0.3, etc. Um, and they're a little thin brass brass disc with the laser hole in it that's then mounted in a little vinyl disc. And uh, they're really easy to use. You can also make a pinhole. There's a couple different ways. One is just to get some thin metal like uh, the cut out some aluminum from a pop can, a soda can, um, or maybe some heavy duty aluminum foil. If you can find, like a hobby shop, if you can find some brass shim stock, that works really well. Like two thousandths of an inch thick um, brass shim stock is really good. But basically what you do to make the pinhole, there's two ways to do it. One is just to take the finest pin or needle, that sh the, the sharpest one and the, with the finest point that you can find and just carefully poke a hole in the metal and then cut it out with scissors you know around that hole and you're ready to go. The other way and, and one that's a bit more precision is not to actually make a hole with the needle in the metal but to lay the metal on top of say a piece of wood and carefully make a dent in the metal but don't go quite all the way through. Now what will happen then is you'll have a dent on one side of, me of the metal and a bump on the other side and then you take some really fine sandpaper like 400 grit sandpaper and carefully sand that bump down until it opens up to a tiny hole. Now that will make a much more precision pinhole. Um, it, it's not real hard to do but it um, is probably something that most people <laughs> won't bother to try to do. I, what I really recommend if you're going to do this is you know just to do it fast and quick get you some like heavy duty aluminum foil, poke a tiny hole in it with just the sharpest pin or needle you can find and then cut it out and tape it in your, inside your body cap. You know, if, if you find that that's a lot of fun, maybe you want the image quality a little bit to be a little bit better, go to Reality So Subtle's website and just order some pinholes. They're, like I said, they're just beautifully made, laser drilled, and they work great. So, one of the things that's really wonderful about shooting pinhole with a digital camera versus film are some of the in-camera effects that you can get with a digital camera. Now mine, my camera has several different scene modes and normally I've just got it in normal or maybe a vivid scene mode um, but there's one called keyline that makes the images look almost like posterization. They're, the details basically all gone and, and the colors are you know really vibrant but they're I'll just have to show you some of the images that I'm going to take. But um, it really makes for a unique image. There's also another one that is um, called Dramatic Tone that uh, makes the, the contrast real high. 
and adds um, almost like some darkness or blacks into the image. It is real dramatic looking. Um, I'll, I'll take some pictures with that too. Um, there's a, a few more. I mean, there's some that are um, black and white or sepia, and, and, and you can certainly use those. There's one called cross process that looks like you processed, um, you know, like color film in the wrong chemistry, like a slide film in color negative chemistry or something like that. It's called cross processing. It really um, kind of looks odd. I, I really haven't found that to be very attractive. Um, there's actually one called pinhole that doesn't really look like a pinhole. Um, there's several that are like pale and light color. There's one called water, uh, water color. Uh, there's one called pop art that's kind of cool. It really makes the colors, um, enhances the colors. So there's one of the cool things is, is all the different um, scene modes that are available on a digital camera that you can use to make some really interesting effects. So we're going, like I mentioned, we're going to the Watonga Cheese Festival today. Uh, it's in Watonga, Oklahoma, and they, you know, it's a small town festival like a lot of small towns have. In this case, Watonga is kind of known locally here for the cheese that they have a cheese factory there that they make, and uh, so they celebrate that. And and there'll be some fun food to eat and some different things to see. And I'm just going to go and and take some pictures and kind of see what I can can find. Um, but one of the things I'm going to do kind of intentionally is shoot uh, a pinhole picture, you know, as normal and maybe one with the key line and another one with the um, dramatic tone effect and let you see some of the differences between some of those. Those are the three that I tend to, to use the most for pinhole. Uh, maybe the pop art would be a good one on a, on a picture or two. But um, So I'm going to take some of those and so you can see what can you know what you can do with a digital camera. Now that's just in-camera effects. So that doesn't include what you can do, you know, in post-processing. So that's something else to think about. Um, so the cool thing is, like I say, we can shoot color or we can shoot monochrome. Uh, we can use these art filters, and uh, we're going to take some pictures and kind of see what they look like. And uh, so let's uh, look at the workbench here. I'll show you how to put this uh, pinhole lens together, and then after that, um, we can look at some images. Okay, let's take a look at how to make this. Now the first thing I did, now you notice I've already drilled a hole in this, but the way I got started was to use a compass that was set to slightly less than the center of the body cap uh, when, when set at the edge. And I marked four times around the out, from the outside of this to create some lines that showed me you know, approximately where the center was. And then I used a tapered drill bit. These are a stepped drill bit that um, we have some stores in Oklahoma and I think they're scattered around the country too called Harbor Freight and they sell these really cheap. And so I just used a cordless drill and um, drilled this hole in the body cap. And that type of bit drills a nice clean hole and uh, it's really good for plastics and so that works really well. If you do decide to make your own pinhole by the way a compass has a really sharp uh, pin on it and they're really good for making pinholes. Uh, probably sharper than you would get with a sewing needle or a straight pin. So if you're looking for um, something to use to make a pinhole, if you have a compass they usually have a really sharp uh, pin on them. Okay, so all we have to do now, now before we go any further, I hope I don't have to say this, I'm going to anyway, it should go without saying that you should never try to drill a hole in your body cap with it mounted on the camera. I really hope that goes without saying. But when you drill the hole in the body cap, make sure you take it off the camera. If you drill a hole in your body cap with it mounted on the camera, very bad things will happen to your camera. So having said that, if you do that, don't blame me. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to get this pinhole taped uh, into the center of this where it's, you know, just eyeball it, get it nice and centered, and we're going to tape it in. The tape I'm going to use is what's called gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is a cloth tape. It's real sticky. Nice thing is it doesn't leave any residue behind when you untape something with it. When you remove the tape, it doesn't leave any residue behind. Uh, doesn't reflect light much. And um, Gaffer tape is a little bit pricey, but you can use, you know, black electrical tape or black duct tape or black vinyl tape. Really just about any kind of tape will work. Um, 
you know, preferably a dark colored tape, but even even masking tape or something would probably work just fine. Okay, well that's really all there is to it. Next thing is just to simply mount it on the camera and it would mount just like, you know, a body cap or a lens would. This is my Olympus EP5. Now, the nice thing is, with a digital camera, you don't have to worry about calculating the exposure, or the, uh, the size of the aperture, or reciprocity failure, or any of that stuff. The metering in the camera is going to handle all that for you. I tend to set my cameras on aperture priority. Uh, I usually, for this kind of work, I'll set them on auto ISO as well, so it just automatically selects the lowest ISO it can manage. And then um, I'll set the image stabilization to the focal length of this body cap. Now, on micro four-thirds cameras, the distance from the lens flange to the sensor is 19.25 millimeters. And this lip here, that where it meets the um, lens flange, is... A little further back than the surface where the pinhole is. So the actual focal length of this is going to be probably around 21 millimeter, 22 millimeter, something like that. So I'll set, there's a 21 millimeter setting in the image stabilization on this camera. So I'm going to set it at my image stabilization at 21 millimeter. And that should do really well. So the plan is, is to take um, three pictures of each subject that I choose. First one, I'll just use the camera in vivid mode, which is kind of the standard uh, mode for this camera that I, when I use it, just take pictures with. The next picture I'll do on the key line setting, which gives those posterization looking prints or images. And the third setting will be the dramatic tone setting that gives um, kind of a high contrast, kind of a dark look to the image. And you know, I, I think what we're gonna see when we do this is that some pictures will work well with one setting and some will work maybe better with another, but it'll be fun to try, to try to use some of these scene modes along with the pinhole to see what kind of results we can get. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those images. The pictures I took at the Watonga Cheese Festival today, I used this Olympus EP5. It has more scene modes than my EP1 did. Some of the other images that were done earlier were taken with the EP1. So this is just a lot of fun to do. It kind of gets you back to the roots of photography. And, um, you know, the, there's something, some number of people, I guess, that 
uh, really kind of believe that pinhole should, you know, be the domain of film photographers. But I really feel like, you know, a pinhole lens in a digital camera has a lot of, you know, really great um, attributes. It's, you know, it's obviously the results are immediately visible. You can get some really great special effects. There's a look you get with pinhole that you can't get with a lens. Uh, the, you know, the total depth of field from, you know, right up to the lens to infinity, everything's in focus. And yet, while I say everything's in focus, obviously things aren't necessarily that sharp because it's a pinhole, not a real lens. So, you know, the effect is, is really unique and it's a lot of fun. So, you know, it's a way just to experiment with photography and get some really unique effects and create some very, you know, artistic impressionist type pictures. And, um, you know, I really enjoy pinhole photography with film cameras and I, and I do a bit of that. And, but then I found myself, you know, really enjoying being able to do it digital, being able to use <clears throat> some of the effects that the camera has, uh, being able to use the image stabilization, being able to see the results, you know, more or less instantly. And so I, I don't think that using a digital camera for pinhole photography is, is a bad thing. I mean, it's, um, it, it's really a great tool to have and you can you know you can buy a pinhole lens for your digital camera but they're so easy to make that uh, I highly recommend doing that so like I say I'll put a link for reality so subtle's website in, in the description down below if you want to buy pinholes I started out making my own pinholes and using them largely for film cameras but then found that I could order them from reality so subtle and yes they're coming from France um, but it didn't take very long at all. He pops them in an envelope and mails them to you and they show up pretty quick. I was, I was really impressed. Uh, obviously it doesn't take a jet very long to fly from France to America. So the, the mailing time was really quite quick. I was, I was really impressed. So anyway, that's, um, that's pinhole photography with a digital camera. Um, I hope you'll get out and try this. It really gives you something else to really experiment with and try to have some fun with. And that's the whole thing about photography. You know, if it's not fun, then what are we doing, you know? And that's, it's a great way to add something really fun to your photography. And you'll make some images that you can't duplicate any other way. I know my, my cameras have a pinhole uh, scene mode and it doesn't look like a pinhole camera. So <laughs> if you really want pinhole images, you gotta stick a pinhole in front of the, in, of the front of the sensor. So give it a try. It's really fun. It's really something unique you can do and I think you'd enjoy it. So if you have any thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I always appreciate it when you watch my videos. And as always, thanks for watching.